Right now, you should be standing by the main entrance to St Paul's Cathedral. This magnificent building was built by Sir Christopher Wren. Before the fire, St Paul's Cathedral was, if anything, more impressive. Larger and taller than the current church, it dominated the city skyline. At the start of the fire, people thought that St Paul's would be a safe haven from the fire. But they couldn't have been more wrong. The fire reached St Paul's at eight in the evening of the third day of the fire. St Paul's Cathedral was really the scene of one of the great tragedies of the Great Fire. Because it was surrounded by booksellers and printers at the time, they thought that it being a massive stone building, it would be safe. So they stored all their books and paper in the crypt. But unfortunately, at the time, St Paul's was being um, repaired. It was covered in wooden scaffolding, which caught fire. The fire sort of travelled up the scaffolding to the roof. The lead melted and the fire just kind of collapsed inside the cathedral. At first, it was hoped that the original stone building could be saved. But the damage to it was too great. And in 1668, it was agreed that a new cathedral should be built. It was to be a symbol of hope for Londoners. It took 36 years to complete. Now walk back round the side of St Paul's along St Paul's churchyard and cross the road. Walk down towards the Millennium Bridge and stand next to the Fireman's Blitz Memorial looking back up at the cathedral. When making his plans for the new cathedral, Wren asked for an original piece of stone from the old building to be used in the new construction. The stonemasons found a tombstone with the word Resurgam on it from the old churchyard. It means, I will arise. You can see that the carving within the pediment is a phoenix rising from the flames, the symbol of renewal or rebirth. Sir Christopher Wren was the first person to be buried in the new cathedral. St Paul's is his memorial and resting place. It's really worth going inside this iconic building. But this is the end of the Fire of London tour, and we hope you've enjoyed it. If you'd like to learn more about London during the time of the Great Fire, and see some of the objects featured on this tour, visit the Museum of London.